This is the Hot Take Hockey Podcast with your hosts, Lucas and John Viveros. But now flipping to Noah Hannafin, the reason why I say Hannafin is three reasons. One being he's a pending UFA. Calgary's going to have to figure out contracts. There's a lot of rumors for right now from Friedman that Hannafin's likely not going to want to stay in Calgary. That's number one. Number two, Trey Living. Obvious take right here. He was just the GM of the Calgary Flames. He's got a lot of familiarity with um, Noah Hannafin. That's reason two. Reason three being still with about Trey Living. He is known to build defense groups. So I think if I had betting odds here, betting favorites, yes, I love that Scott Lawton move, but I would say if if I if I had to make a bet, I think Trey Living's first trade as a Toronto Maple Leaf GM is going to be for a defenseman. Um, we'll see what happens. Obviously, I, I totally could be wrong. I'd look like a dummy on that, but I do wonder uh, if one, the Leafs keep Brody on the, their last year here. And I wonder too, if they just build like a solid shutdown guy or sh- sorry, shut down pair and then just run it back with Riley Shen. Or if they finally, because I think you, you shut it out drew, I'll shut out drew again, talking about defensemen and cup winning teams. Look at like the recent cup winning teams, Petrangelo on Vegas, McCarr on Colorado, Hedman on Tampa, Hedman on Tampa. So you go through all these winning teams. They usually, and I, I love Morgan. <laughs> I'm not, this is not me smashing Morgan here, but I will say this Morgan can be very streaky. And I know he does show up in the playoffs, but I, I would put Morgan in a similar, I mean, I think Morgan's more clutch in the playoffs than a guy like Shea Theodore, but I think if Vegas, I, I think Shea Theodore is an amazing defenseman, a great defenseman. Yeah. I think he's even yeah. like a one B defenseman, but I think if you look at Vegas, if it was just Shea Theodore there, you know what yeah. I mean? So yeah. I think when it comes to that, so imagine like a Morgan Riley and like a Petrangelo. I'm not saying guys like Petrangelo don't grow on trees. And I'm not saying no Petrangelo ain't coming to Toronto. Petrangelo's staying in Vegas the rest of his career probably. But what I am saying is if you can get a right shot guy like that, I don't know who it would be. So that's why I'm saying I wonder where Trey Living goes with this. If he goes like, I don't know, man. I, I think I showed it to you. I, I don't think the Leafs are getting a, a Colton Pareko from St. Louis. But what I am saying is like yeah. a Hannafin Pareko like that or like, a Hannafin Brody second pair would be a lot more of an upgrade yeah. in my opinion. Like, I feel like that might be the direction. I guess just I'll throw it to you. Like, what do you think about Trey living? Do you think a guy like Hannafin could be in the Leafs target or do you like, I love, I love yeah. the Hannafin like idea. I love it. Also, I'll add a fourth reason why I think the Leafs could be interested in him. They were definitely interested in him for his draft. And oh, for sure. Right. I mean, Mike, Mike Babcock was all over. That's who he wanted. So, yeah. um, I, I know the Leafs have had interest in with him in, in the past. And I think he's, I love him as a fit for Toronto. I think you'd be a great defenseman for them. Yeah. Um, but like you said, I, I feel like the more I'm thinking about it out loud and when I've thought about it these last few weeks, like TJ Brody might not be staying this last year. I feel like they might be looking for a different mix on that blue line. Trey Living's aggressive. He's known yeah. to be pretty aggressive. Um, so I, and Trey Living tried to trade Brody once before. Yeah, <laughs> once he did. upon a time so, to get Kadri. <laughs> so it shows you that he wasn't all in on Brody to begin with, right? I mean, mind you, that was a really good deal. If 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 that's how it played out for yeah. for Calgary, if they got if they had gotten Kadri back then, but uh, but yeah. So, anyways, I I do see the Leafs defenseman defense uh, getting an overhaul. The defense group getting yeah. an overhaul. And and, I was going to. I like that. I like. Yeah, that I was going to say just quickly to add what you said. I feel like this might be recency bias, but my opinion on Brody's changed a bit more Mm -hmm. so man, because what I've, what I've looked at the last two years more than I ever did was Uh like, how are guys showing in the playoffs? Like Mm -hmm. I'm so, I, I've completely exited from such a large majority of Leaf fans that like, just want to cope and look at the season and just ignore what's going on in the playoffs. And that's why I've been, I know I'm a big Riley guy, but that's why I've been pushing that agenda so much more. Cause it's like, it's not a bias anymore. The guy has shown time after time after time that he steps up in the playoffs when it actually matters. It's like anything. It's like Florida as a group. Sure. So many guys in Florida were kind of just chilling out in the season. And then they pushed yeah. in the last couple months, but like, it doesn't matter, man. It doesn't matter until you just, if you get to the playoffs, anything can happen. Florida just showed that. So that's why I look at a guy like Riley. I look at a guy like, even though Nylander drives us nuts on so many occasions, he has shown now time after time, after time since 2019, mm. that he shows up every year in the playoffs. So my thing is, when I look at TJ Brody, he's a great presence for the Leafs through 82 games. But is TJ Brody that guy that we're really like raving about in the playoffs? No, that's why I, I like thinking of it as there's guys that get you to the playoffs. No doubt, right? There, yeah. There's guy, there's guys that, you know, for 82 games, they're kind of subpar. 
And maybe Scott Lawton is an example of that. Maybe he's just kind of guy and he has, he has good presence in the season, but he's, he's not a substantial difference maker. But then when the games get tough and it's playoff time, you right? need Scott Lawton, you need a Scott Lawton, you TJ Brody has showed recently in the last few playoffs that he really hasn't done much from an offensive perspective. And even defensively, he's looked sus. And yeah. honestly, that's not something I've said ever really about TJ Brody, right? In the yeah. regular season, no doubt. I haven't said that. So I agree, man. I, I think the defense needs an overhaul and they need to target players that have proven track records for playoff success and also just different a different element to the team. Um, and Pareko intrigues me. Obviously, he struggled last year with St. Louis. Their whole team did. I think their decor is like a shell of what it once was. And yeah. so that's that's a part of the reason. But uh, but that one does intrigue me a little. I think he's going to get moved. Um, but for the, for the Leafs, I, I don't think it's a sure bet if you get him that it, your things are going to be solved. I like Hannafin more as a stability ad um, yeah. over Pareko. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I was going to say in a scenario, and I, I honestly, I mean, ask my girl. I've been fooling around a cat friendly the last couple of weeks, just like, Talk about coping. That's how I've been coping. Um, I was thinking of like an ideal top four of what I'd like in terms of size, in terms of like getting what the Leafs would want and like thinking about Trey living. And if I had like a dream, I don't even think it's like into the like irrational or like dream scenario where it's like just not going to happen. But I think in terms of like Shen coming back, I think that's, there's a good shot. Obviously Riley still being here. If you go for a guy like Hannafin, I think if you went for like a right physical guy, like a Pareko, I was even going to say a Carson Soucy would interest me. Like if mm-hmm. Carson Soucy was possible in like free agency, that size six, five, and you went into next year, a top four of Riley, Shen, Hannafin, Soucy, for example. I, I mean, I think that's a lot more solid than the least I've ever had in terms of size, yeah. in terms of like just presence. Uh, I mean, Frig, man, I would love a second pair of Hannafin Pareko. Don't get me wrong. And fun fact, Pareko actually played on a pair with Riley in the World Championships for Canada. So I that's do also remember a that. Shout. Yep. Um, so there's familiarity there. Obviously, Pareko came to Toronto. Maybe his boy O'Reilly would more willing to say. I don't know. I'm just, I, yeah. I, I'm throwing things out. 